sniffing and looking for things isn't a healing behavior. And so we want to eliminate that sooner rather than later. Come on, come on, good. Kind of get her moving again, encourage her to keep her feet moving. Good. <laughs> Good morning, Kat here with Standing Stone Kennels and we have Quest with us this morning. And today we're going to teach you and her how to heal using the easy lead. So the first thing to keep in mind when you want to teach your puppy to heal is um, that Quest is seven months old, but an exact age isn't a guarantee of when your puppy's ready to learn how to heal. What's more important is that you have a puppy that's bold and confident when they're out in the field hunting um, and that they're searching independently and finding birds, which we've seen with Quest's um, previous live videos of her being out in the field, finding and pointing birds, that she is bold and confident and that she is finding birds and searching independently and isn't just standing next to us and, and healing with us. So we want her to be bold and confident, which she is. Second of all is we also want her to be pulling and kind of a nuisance on lead, which as you can see, she is. She's doing a lot of pulling and jumping. And so that means she's ready to learn how to heal. So to get started with that, we're going to show you how to set up the easy lead, first of all, on your puppy. And we're using our brand new red easy leads just in time for Christmas. So a couple lucky people are gonna win an easy lead and a red color will definitely be an option for you if you want. So she's getting excited. We're just gonna help her kind of calm down a little bit. FedEx just rolled on in, so more distress distractions, um, which always in training, the more distractions you have, the harder it is to sometimes accomplish exactly what you're trying to do. So as you can see, Quest is not wearing an e-collar today um, because we're not using the e-collar for any part of this training. Next, we have our easy lead clipped to the ring on her flat collar, as you can see. Then the next part is we want this handle to go through this ring. And sometimes that's easier to do before you put it on the puppy or as you go around their neck. So I'm gonna put it around her neck and then slip it through that ring. You just squeeze the handle and it goes through that ring. So then I have a slip lead. The next part to keep in mind is we heal our puppies, our dogs on the left. So when she's on my left side, I want the lead to slip off the outside of her neck. Oh, and she turned around, which is super helpful. So you can see what I'm talking about. I want that to slip off the outside so that it doesn't bind. She's paying attention to FedEx because if she's facing the right way, then you can see it releases. Whereas if I was healing her on the right and I had the lead set up this way, it's going to bind and not release. And using the easy lead to teach healing is easy because it uses a pressure on, pressure off technique. When she's not in position, she's gonna feel the pressure and it's kind of self-correcting because she will apply the pressure herself when she's jumping or when she's pulling. Um, and then she's not gonna want that pressure so she's going to get back in position once she learns how to turn it off. The next part is once we've got it set up as a slip lead, the first step to teaching the healing is to make a little halter over her face. And we do that by creating a little figure eight or an X under her muzzle and then up over her nose. So the first part here is just to get her comfortable feeling that up over her nose. Uh, this is really common for your puppy to thrash their head, try and even paw at it, try and mouth at it. Yep, you're doing all the normal things. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure so she gets used to feeling that pressure over her nose and up here behind her ears before we start immediately walking. Because if she's not comfortable with this pressure and you start walking it right away, she's gonna fight it even more and be even more uncomfortable. So we just wanna give a few tugs, just slight pressure on and pressure off so she understands what that feels like. Next step here, oh, stood up a little bit. Next step is to get movement involved with feeling the pressure. And we've found through training lots of dogs and using the easy lead to teach healing is that if you can make a lateral movement before you start moving forward, um, that that actually helps them get used to moving and feeling the pressure without trying to take off and run in front of you and pull and jerk on the lead right away. So we're gonna just take a 
sideways step. We're gonna take another sideways step and feel a little more pressure. I'm gonna get her back over here in position. She doesn't really know how to heal yet or to stay in a healing position. So I'm gonna move her a little bit at this point. Once she understands how to heal, it'll be important not to move the dog or move your body into a healing position for your dog. It will be important to ask them to move into a healing position for you. But as of right now, Quest doesn't know what heal means or how to even exhibit the behavior that we're looking for. So asking her to do that isn't going to gain us any ground. So I'm gonna just take another lateral movement, feel a little pressure, good. Take another little lateral movement, help her move her feet, feel a little pressure, good. So she seems to be pretty used to wearing this over her muzzle right now. And like I said, this is the first time she's done this either. So I want to get her attention. Quest. Quest. Hey. There. And we're just going to take a forward step. Feel some pressure. Take another forward step. As soon as she gets up ahead of me, she's feeling that pressure go on. And then when she stops pulling, the pressure releases. So jumps up. She's going to feel some pressure. She's sniffing and putting her head down. She's also gonna feel a little pressure till she brings her head up. Come on. You can be encouraging in this process. So telling her good girl and getting her to focus on us and move forward with us as we're taking some steps will be really important as well. Come on, good. So she took a hop forward, she felt that pressure. It came off, but she stopped pulling ahead herself, so it's self-correcting. So we'll take a couple more steps. Come on. Be encouraging, keeping her on the left. She feels that pressure. She kind of flails against it, moves her legs like she might try and paw that off. So we just apply a little bit of pressure until she stops pulling. Good. Taking a few more steps. So anytime she goes to put her head down to sniff or to be distracted by a feather or a piece of grass in the yard, she's gonna feel a little bit of that pressure until she stops because sniffing or putting their head on the ground to start sniffing and looking for things isn't a healing behavior. And so we want to eliminate that sooner rather than later. Come on, come on, good. Kind of get her moving again, encourage her to keep her feet moving, good. Hey, we just wanted to take a second and thank you for watching our training videos. And if you've enjoyed watching and learning from Quest's training videos, head on over to Patreon, our online dog training community, and show us your support, as well as gain access to other great perks. She pulls out a head, she feels a little bit of pressure, or a little tug. So I'm keeping her attention on my left side here. Come on. Encouraging, come on. Uh -uh. She took a big jump, pulled ahead. She felt a little pressure again until she stopped. Then we're gonna take a few more steps. Come on, come on, Quest, good. Uh -uh. Come on. Come on, come on. Tug, just a few tugs too, light tugs to get her moving again will help. Cause sometimes too, come on. We can get a little bit of this freezing behavior where she's just stopping and standing there and trying to resist the pressure. But if we do light tugs instead of constant pressure, she won't have something necessarily to dig in her heels and resist against. So come on. Good, good. You can take some outside turns Quest, quest. Especially with a dog that's doing a little bit of freezing. Sometimes if you take those outside turns, they have to get their feet moving a little bit more to keep up with you. Um, if you've got a dog that's really bad about pulling ahead and getting ahead of you, taking some inside turns and using your body to create a little bit of personal dominance so that they have to move out of your way. Um, come on, Quest. So we got a little bit of freezing here. Come on, 
So I'm just gonna give her some tugs and be encouraging, just little light tugs. Come on. Then when she gets in position, the pressure releases. Uh, uh, uh. She stops to sniff something. She feels a little more pressure. Good. Good. Let's go ahead and take a second just to be able to show how the pressure on pressure off system works. Okay, because it's probably hard to necessarily see that from a distance in the video. So a lot of people want to try and keep their hand in this loop of the lead. And then I'm short. Um, so when I have that, if I've got to hold all the way up here to do my pressure on pressure off, I'm basically pulling this lead up above my shoulder, which isn't comfortable. So I always like to choke up on it a little bit so I don't have quite as much lead to work with. So pressure on would just be a slight tug up like this. It tightens behind the ears and puts a little bit of pressure across her nose there. Pressure off is just releasing and you can see that it's loose here and loose behind her ears. We don't wanna release so much pressure that it's got a big loop under here and a lot of slack. Otherwise it's gonna pop off over her nose like that. So we wanna maintain just the right amount of tension on the lead. Hey, hey, yeah. So I'm gonna just slip it back up over her muzzle. There we go, had it in her mouth there. But you can see it's really relaxed right now while she's standing here in the right position. When she pulls ahead, if I, even if I don't move my arm at all and she pulls ahead of me, it will automatically apply that pressure for me because she's pulling against that lead. Now, another thing you're probably noticing is Quest's tail is down. She doesn't look as bubbly and as excited as she has in some of her previous videos. So a couple things that I want to mention with that is Quest isn't getting to do what Quest wants to do right now, which is jump around, bounce around, pull on the lead, chase pigeons, run around like a puppy. That's what Quest is enjoying at this point in her life is all that fun stuff that she thinks is fun. But her pulling and jerking on the lead is not fun for me. It's not an enjoyable process to try and take a dog like that for a walk. So we have to find a balance where going for walks will become fun for her, but it will also be an enjoyable process for me. And that just involves teaching her how to heal properly, be in the right position, and avoid having any of that pressure at all. So if she stays in the right position, she's not going to feel any pressure, and this is going to become a more enjoyable process for her. Um, like my mom and family always told me, uh, you can get glad in the same pants you got mad in. So Quest, after a few more sessions and getting used to how the pressure comes off by her staying in a nice healing position, um, she's going to get glad in the same lead that she maybe got sad in. So we're going to just take a few more walks up and back here. Keep the movement going. Be encouraging. A few little tugs. Come in. She gets out ahead, she feels a few tugs. I don't wanna necessarily stop anymore every time she's pulling or tugging or sniffing because eventually she'll learn, hey, if I just flail around or paw at the lead or dig my heels in, mom's gonna stop walking and then I get out of it for a little while. So we wanna keep moving so that she doesn't start conditioning herself that, hey, if I just kind of throw a fit and be naughty, we'll stop and I'll get a break from doing this. But it allows me to make corrections with very little amounts of pressure. I mean, if you can see, I'm barely tugging here. Just a little bit of pivot at my elbow is all that I need. I'm not having to jerk and tug and strain and exhaust myself to teach her how to heal. Good girl. So we've made a ton of improvement just in this first healing session here. Found a feather, that was a distraction, so she got a little bit more of a correction. Making some outside turns, keeping her feet moving. Come on, come on. So she's digging in her heels, I'm being a little more encouraging. Come on, come on Quest. Good, come on. Uh, uh, uh. Good. 
So she got a little bit naughtier on that last loop out. A few more distractions. So we're gonna make another loop so that we can end this little session on a good note. Come on, with some success. Good girl. So we've made lots of improvement. But the nice thing about teaching your dog to heal using this easy lead is it's a progressive system. So as you saw, we started this process with the lead in a crisscross up over her muzzle like this. As she progresses and has a better understanding of the heel behavior, and we see her staying by our side and us having to make fewer and fewer corrections by tugging and by um, applying a little bit of pressure, we eventually will be able to take the lead off over her muzzle, and it'll just be a slip lead that stays up behind her ears like that. And then eventually, we'll be able to take the lead back off out of the handle and it'll just be a clip lead like this and we'll be able to make corrections just with small tugs this way and start overlaying the e-collar to transition to collar conditioning to heal. Obviously, Quest is not ready for all of this yet, um, but we're definitely in the right direction, moving in the right direction with teaching her how to heal. Um, another thing that I want to mention is you can set all this up without clipping to the collar. I'm just going to hold you between my legs so I can show this. So you've got your lead and you pinch the handle and you go, no, 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 just a second. I know. You go through the ring of your clip. Then you can put that over her head and you've got your little slip lead up behind here. Now we added this clip onto our easy lead so that you can clip directly to their collar. So if she would flail or paw this off over her muzzle and actually get out of it, you're still, so let's say she pawed and pulled, you're still attached to her. Even though she got out of it over her muzzle and behind her ears, you're still attached to her. So if you're in a high distraction environment or even a potentially unsafe environment, going for a walk near a road, you're still attached to your dog and that's really important for safety. Again, you just make one little X over her nose and you got her back in our starting healing position. So thanks for watching. Let us know if you had any questions in the comments and we'll get back to those. But make sure that you're liking us on Facebook and following us on Instagram. Um, check out our YouTube channel. If you like what you see, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. But remember to like, share, and comment on this video for your chance to win an easy lead color of your choice. Thanks for watching. Thank you.